There is a world known only to a few, a world open only to the initiated. It's a dangerous, complex, and forbidding world. It is the world of submarines. Few ships are as intriguing or mysterious as the submarine. Seeing it this way is like catching a glimpse of a wild thing on the edge of its domain. Soon this ship will dive and disappear, and for months at a time, she will sail an unseen world. The men on board are as intriguing as the ship they sail. They are members of a fraternity cloaked in mystique, notorious for their silence about where they go and what they do. What is this world like? Why would a man choose to come aboard a ship like this and sail into such an isolated and remote existence? For the first time in 20 years, the United States Navy has allowed a civilian film crew to go along on a submarine patrol. This film is the result. Below decks, in the belly of the beast, the control room, the nerve center of a submarine. The ship's vital systems, helm, periscopes, navigation, weapons, are squeezed into a space about the size of a one-car garage. Here, the submariners seem to rely on a different set of senses. Their perception of the world comes from computer displays geometric projections, and an orientation to their surroundings that's rooted in the imagination. Also, Doug, last man down, hatch secure. Last man down, hatch secure, her, die. Captain, the ship is ready for dive, current sounding, 655 fathoms, check for the chart, press mission to submerge the ship. Very well, officer deck, submerge the ship. Submerge the ship, aye, sir. Diving officer, submerge the ship. Submerge the ship, aye, sir. Two lots, one MC, dive, dive, two blasts and dive alarm. Dive, dive. On the 1MC, dive, dive. Two blasts on the diving alarm. Dive, dive, right? Dive, dive. Dive, dive. For outsiders, the redundancy of communication might seem like overkill. Three, two. That's a wash. One would assume that diving the submarine would be routine. Three, four. But no maneuver or operation here can ever be routine. Three, six. A hundred and thirty men are beginning a lonely descent into an environment as foreign and as hostile as outer space. Roger, repeat, you want. Roger, repeat. I said in all main ballast tank men. The ship is as intricate as any spacecraft. All vents are shut, Doc. With the added risk of a nuclear power plant just six thirty two. yards out. Number two scopes under. Lower six number two four. scope. Lower number two scope. Six six. So every communication on board is acknowledged and verified. And verified again. Because every action must be conspicuous and conscious. There's no margin for error. Seven, eight. Dive and watch, all conditions normal on the dive. Condition normal on the dive, aye. Officer Dick, condition normal on the dive. Very well, diving officer. Captain at 150 feet, trim satisfaction. Very well. Let's go 300 feet ahead standard. 300 feet ahead standard, aye, sir. Helm, all ahead standard. Diving officer, make it up 300 feet. Throughout the rest of the ship, the sailors not on watch are getting reacquainted with life in a steel tube, 360 feet long and 33 feet wide. Because of the limited space, there's an intimacy here that's unique to the military. The crew is courteous, considerate, gentle for a military outfit. But how else could these men get along for the months they'll spend submerged? There are no days off, no phone calls home, no windows to daydream through. For as long as this patrol lasts, this tube is their world. Submariners can turn any nook into a private retreat. Because when it comes right down to it, the only true private space on a submarine is the space between one's ears. <laughs> 